Welcome back to the channel once again everyone. As requested by many of my subscribers, today I have here the JBL Party Box 310 that I'll be doing a teardown to show you all the ins and outs of this amazing speaker. Before we start, if you're watching this and not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so you don't miss out on my future teardown contents. And like always, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you find this video beneficial. Your support goes a long way in helping my channel grow and allow me to come out with more content like this. Lastly, I have also included my Instagram and merch in the description below, so make sure you check them out. With that out of the way, let's get into the teardown of the JBL Party Box 310. First off, the JBL Party Box 310 weights around 38 pounds and will run you around $500 to $550 depending on where you get it from. This speaker delivered a total of 240 watts of JBL Pro Sound and an impressive 18 hours battery life. On top of that, it also has a built-in telescopic handle and wheels to make the transportation of the speaker as easy as possible. Now let's see what this speaker is all about. First thing to the teardown, we are going to put the speaker on its back and remove these four orange rubber feet on the side to reveal four screws that we will remove. Once this is completed, we will do the same thing on the other side of the speaker. Now with that done, we can take our attention to the top of the speaker. Hidden within the foam holder groove, there are three screws that will need to be removed. Now we will go toward the back of the speaker and take off 14 plastic circle cover so we can remove 14 screws. These screws are what hold the side and bottom panel onto the enclosure. Once that's done, we will go toward the bottom and pry open the tripod cap. Located in there are three rubber plugs that will need to be removed so we can take out three screws. Now that that's done, we will remove these four rubber feet so we can also remove four more screws. There are also two hidden screws in the front that can be accessed by removing this cover. Lastly, there's a single screw hidden within the bottom handle that we will also need to remove. Next, we will pry open this back piece which will give us access to four more screws that we can take off. Now we can gently pull off the plastic side cover. This cover has a nice design with the JBL exclamation mark and the plastic feels to be made of good quality durable material. With this side off, we can go ahead and remove the second side panel as well. Again this is a very nice design but this time has the JBL logo instead. Once both panels are removed, we can put the speaker upright so we can take off the top panel. Now we will gently lift the top panel so we can disconnect all the cables that is still connected to the control board. 
Here we have the top control panel. It contains all the silicone buttons, which look a bit complicated to tell what the function are, but after knowing what they do, it makes controlling the speaker much easier with the press of a button. It also has a long groove on the front to hold your phone or tablet, and a rubberized handle in the back for easy carrying. On the inside, you can see here we have two PCB bore, which we will remove by taking off 10 screws. Here we have the control buttons. They are made of durable silicone and has white plastic support on the inside to help the button function properly when you press on it. And here we have the two separate control board. They contain all the buttons that allow you to use and control the speaker as well as all the LED indicator lights. Seeing these two boards amazes me how complex the board looks just for the functionality of providing speaker control. And here we have the top panel. Like I mentioned, it has a phone holder groove in the front which works pretty well in holding your phone or tablet and toward the rear it has a handle with the orange grip that allows you to easily carry the speaker. Now let's set the speaker down so we can continue taking off the top portion. Here we will remove 6 screws to remove this plastic cover. This protective cover contains all these tiny holes that helps provide ventilation to help keep the motherboard and AC board from getting too hot during use. Before we remove the motherboard, we will need to make sure that we disconnect all the cables. Now that's done, we can remove 5 screws to take off the motherboard. And here we have the motherboard. It contains Bluetooth 5.1 for a quick stable connection and has true wireless pairing for a connection up to 2 party speaker to really get the party going. It is compatible with the JBL Party app that allows you to change track, light show, control karaoke settings, and many other great features. It is also able to provide the speaker with 240 watts of pure JBL Pro sound that can really rock the room. Now we will disconnect and remove the power supply board by taking off 5 screws. And here with the power supply board, which provides the speaker with up to 240 watts of output power. If you have the PartyBox 310 plug in while being used, it will give the speaker a low performance boost compared to if it was only run off of battery power. Now let's turn the speaker to the side so we can remove the battery pack, which is held on by 4 screws. And here we have the battery pack. It is a 7.2 volt 10,000 mAh battery pack that has a charge time of 3.5 hours and a maximum play time of up to 18 hours. With my use of the speaker, the battery life has been great with a combined hour of up to 12 hours before I needed to charge the speaker again. With the battery removed, we can continue to remove 4 screws from the side of the speaker and then repeat the same thing on the other side. We will return to the top of the speaker to remove two screws that is holding down the heatsink. This heatsink acts as a mount for the two boards as well as to help cool the boards from the heat that they generate. Next we will remove the retractable handlebar by removing five screws. After removing the screws you can either pry it off but for me I find it easier just to hit it outward a few times. And here we have the handlebar. It has a nice and comfortable handlebar grip along with the Party Box 310 words printed on the side. The handlebar is also spring locks, which easily lock the handlebar in place when not in use. 
Now to remove the bottom panel, we will need to take off the wheels. On the wheels, there's a cover that needs to be pried off to reveal two bolts that need to be removed. And here is the wheel cap. They look almost identical to those past the radiator on the flip lineup. With both caps removed, we will need to use a tool to hold one end of the wheel nut while we twist the other one. And here we have the wheels. They contain their own bearings to help produce a smooth rotation with minimal friction. Only issue with this wheel is that they are quite small, so you may struggle with wheeling the speaker on certain terrains such as the grass area or the sandy beach. With the wheels removed, we can now remove the bottom portion of the speaker. It has a handle on the rear and a hole for the tripod in the center. We will now remove three screws to take off the remaining handlebar assembly. This rod insert seems to be made of aluminum and comes with these rubber seals to help support the rod themselves and give them a tight fit. Now we will go toward the back of the speaker to the input location. There is one single hidden screw that needs to be removed. And here are two knobs which I removed, but it's not necessary. To remove the input assembly, we will need to gently pry and pull the input assembly out. Next, there are two screws and a ribbon cable that needs to be removed before we can take off the boards. And here we have the input cover with all the knobs. And here we have the boards, which consists of three separate pieces interconnected together. These boards provide you with the dual mic and guitar input, gain control, USB port, aux port, and daisy chaining. Next, we will remove the front panel. The front panel is glued tightly onto the box enclosure, so a bit of strength will be needed to pull it off. With the front panel removed, we can take off the LED board by removing 16 screws. And here we have the main LED board with over 60 LED lights and four flash boards with their own individual LED strobe light. They produce beautiful RGB lights that can be controlled from the speaker or from the JBL Party Box app. Now we will remove the two tweeters by taking off three screws from each tweeter. And here we have the tweeters. They measure 2.5 inches and provide the speaker with the perfect amount of height to achieve quality sound. And here we have the front grille panel. On the inside, it has a diffuser ring to help diffuse the light from the LED. And in the front, there's a durable metal grille with the JBL emblem in the center. Next, we remove the woofer by taking off six screws from each driver. And here we have the woofer. They measure 6.5 inches and provide the speaker with the best audio quality possible with the rich bass that it produces. 
With the bass boost enabled, the Striper produces the perfect bass without being overpowering. With everything removed, we are left with this wooden box. Inside it contains your bass port, a few cables, and some polyfills. And this completes the teardown of the JBL Party Box 310. If you made this far into the video, consider subscribing if you are not. And don't forget to hit that like button to help the video out. Thank you so much for joining me on this teardown and I hope to see you again very soon on the next one.